ASEAN Dailies. First and foremost, news from Southeast Asia. Hey, this is Arlene. Hi, this is Grace. And you are with us. This time we want to focus on trends in Southeast Asia for today. So, what are the trends right now in Southeast Asia? Well, the trend in Southeast Asia, there are lots of trends, but then we should go to East Asia. Ah, East Asia, what is happening there? Well, um, there's a very interesting looking architect uh, that's already been built, but it it's not just a small building that we're talking about. It's just a huge shopping mall, but it's but made, up of, made up of something interesting material, I would say. Uh, what material would that be? <laughs> when we think about malls, usually it's so... Mm -hmm. But then the, this shopping mall is uh, made entirely of the shipping containers. Wow. I guess they have a lot of shipping containers that they don't want. <laughs> or they want to save money. But it's really creative that they are thinking about it uh, in Seoul, South Korea capital. And what you are seeing right now is uh, a, a shopping mall container built in 2015. is called the Common Ground Mall made up of 200 uh, module shipping containers that house almost 17,400 square feet of space. That's right. And then uh, when you uh, look at the, all those pictures that are already provided from Tech Insider, uh, it looks also very environment friendly somehow and also very interestingly built inside. So every single corner they made use of this space in, within the shopping mall. And uh, apparently it is gaining a lot of popularity among a lot of clients that uh, because of the creativity and also because of the building designs. I'm looking at a lot of the photos that is online right now. Uh, people are sharing it on Instagram. It's really, really l interesting looking and I really like the way they design it. It's very minimalistic. Mm. So maybe a bit of Korean feature as well uh, of what you can see almost in a lot of the Korean restaurants and shops. Mm. So uh, if you want to know mm -hmm. more about it, according to Urban Tainer, uh, they mentioned that because all the containers were prefabricated, it only took five months to construct this whole space. So you know what? We should have our own shopping mall if it only takes five months and not that many <laughs> money. <laughs> Maybe we don't, we don't need to have a shopping mall, but we can have a different sort of like purpose, yeah. like halls or space for other things because in Malaysia there are already lots of shopping mall <laughs> out here. That's true. Have you been to Common Ground shopping mall? I have not but I'm very interested to go there because it's in Seoul anyways. Yeah, yeah. which is like in the middle of where everything is happening. So next time if we visit Seoul we know where to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. You're now listening to Durian ASEAN. The voice of discovery and sharing. Hey, this is Arlene. Welcome back. This is Grace. And you're still with us on our trends in Southeast Asia. And apparently coming from Malaysia, we were hoping to host this 2017 CA Games and ASEAN Para Games together. But something is happening. I guess it's not <laughs> mesh made in heaven <laughs> since uh, according to the proposal was rejected at the Sea Games Federation meeting. Uh, the Olympic Council of Malaysia Deputy President Datuk Sri Muhammad Nurza Zakaria said that uh, the proposal was put to vote but only Malaysia voted in favour while unfortunately 10 other affiliated countries did not support the proposal. Oh, no. That's a lot of <laughs> I think they, they were thinking that it's ASEAN Para Games. They, want, they do not want it to be uh, the same as the, ASE, uh, the Sea Games, which mm. is also another ASEAN Games. That's right. And also countries, they were also of the, these opinions that these Para Games would require special attention from them. And also uh, Nozra uh, said that the affiliates also discuss at length the risks involved in the organizing the events together. Mm. 
And also, he said that various reasons were offered by the respective countries during the meeting, which he would be submitting it to the council. And of course, you mentioned earlier that uh, Paragames on its own is so unique that it's supposed to have um, a special media attention to gain recognition. That's true. But there are also other reasons where uh, I think at the end of the day, they do not. I mean, I think Sea Games is something that everyone know. It's quite well known, but Para Games is something that people haven't really get to know well. So it's good that they somehow carve a name on their own first. So in, will be in March, there will be a Malaysian Paralympic Council, and also proposed at the uh, that the Sea Games will be there as well, and the ASEAN, uh, both ASEAN uh, Para Games will be held on the same dates in August two thousand seventeen. You are now listening to Durian ASEAN, the voice of discovery and sharing. Hey, this is Arlene. Welcome back. This is Grace, and you're still with us on our trends in Southeast Asia. So in our ASEAN Daily, we want to cover uh, trends that are also related to what is happening in the, on the economic side. And what we are seeing right now, India is hoping to overtake Bangladesh and Vietnam in the garment exports. So the government of India has approved about 60 billion rupees. That's about $894 a million dollars. Uh, they aimed at creating millions of jobs in the country's textile and the garment industry, which is pretty a positive news to the whole public in India. And India is one of the gigantic countries. India is definitely a big country that is able to overtake any country in any industry. So it's uh, really interesting to see that they are definitely eyeing f- to expand the govern- government sector. And previously, the government sector has been mon- monopolized by Bangladesh and Vietnam. And India was ahead of these two countries in garment exports between 1995 and the year 2000. Oh my god, that's like ancient times. <laughs> that was like years ago. Yeah, yeah. decades ago. <laughs> but now... Uh, Its neighboring country, Bangladesh, is now the world's second largest apparel exporter. Uh, That's after China. So that uh, the record has surpassed India in 2003. Mm -hmm. So now they really want to boost up the industry, especially textile industry, and um, be able to compete the neighboring countries to improve further in terms of this industry. But uh, India, when you talk about that country, it I mean, not only the population, but the fashion industry, the textile industry Mm -hmm. is in fact really, really huge. That's true. What we are seeing right now is the India textile industry is only contributing about 14% to the industrial production to the world, while they are aiming at increasing it to a to make it into a $30 billion yeah. exports uh, in the future. Uh, so in this will be part of their three-year plan. But at the end of the day, I think uh, it's also important to see that it's not just about expanding the garment sector, but it's also, uh, it is also about looking at how to revolutionize the garment sector because there's a lot of reports where the garment uh, workers are not being treated well. Uh, We saw that a lot in the Bangladesh. They are not working in the uh, condition where it's safe. So, yeah, a lot of things to do. I think that could be a very good angle to look at after they provided with more jobs and opportunities to the people. But definitely, it's a very positive news coming from India to that their aim at to expanding their uh, textile industry. Mm-hmm. That's all from our ASEAN Daily today. Thank you for tuning in to Trian ASEAN. For more updates on Southeast Asia, please go to our website at trianasean.com. If you're on the go, you can always download our TuneIn app on your mobile. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels at Drian ASEAN and Drian ASEAN TV. Don't forget to follow us on our Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram.